We've got in Cambridge, a, I think, a unique uh, city economy and one that's actually really important to the UK as a whole. And growth that happens here is growth that doesn't otherwise happen in the UK. But the, the kind of ability to continue with that rather significant economic uh, potential is at risk from issues that any of us who live and work in the city know about. Transport congestion, insufficient housing of all types, particularly insufficient affordable housing, uh, skill shortages in certain key areas, and a risk, if we don't address these, of a reduction in the perception of the quality of life uh, for Cambridge, which is what makes us a place that people from all over the world want to come and live and work. We don't want to be a city like uh, the Silicon Valley where people are commuting in 100 miles. We already have a lot of Cambridge residents having to move out simply because they or their children cannot afford to live here. We've got a case to make. There is a huge partnership there of different organisations. But unless we're actually raising the case for Cambridge and putting our case over as a, as a city and, a, and as a sub-region, we will not be able to secure the prosperity we need in the future. So what are the things that keep us in Cambridge and what's standing in our way? Taking away of the Tier 1 visa, bringing in people from outside of the, of the EU is becoming increasingly difficult, which is, it, which is not helping us to continue to grow in the way that we would grow. That it's not like the old days. You can't, you can't tell people where to work. I have a situation now where my head of R&D is in Germany, my head of business development and licensing is, is in Boston, my head of supply chain is in North, is in North Carolina, I don't want these people to be there, but the people are there because I'm losing these arguments. It's a loss to Cambridge. And Cambridge can compete very, very successfully with those, those places if it has the proper vision. What do I think the recipe for success is? We need new revenue streams. We need more borrowing powers. We need Treasury to let go the, the, the kind of leash a bit further and recognise the benefits that can be generated for the UK as a whole if Cambridge grows. We have you know, the right ingredients for economic growth in the future in the same way that Birmingham did uh, back in the 19th century. First of all, it is very clear there is a lot of money willing to come here, both from, from equity finances poured in and from, and from debt investors. They're very used to the idea of Cambridge being a special place. They know this is growing faster than China and they want to be part of that place. We have an extremely strong record of long, stable economic growth going back over 50 years. And that says to them that there's a very high certainty of income flows coming off uh, the new traffic that we can generate here. I think we need an infrastructure investment fund, and that would allow us to blend private and public debt and be backed by this kind of tax increment finance scheme I've talked about. And you can have a range of revenue streams playing into that. That could be business rates, it could be congestion charges, housing revenues, or property taxes. You know, why couldn't we go to Treasury and say, let us retain some of the stamp duty from new housing growth in Greater Cambridge to fund the kind of investment we think is needed to allow that housing to happen in the first place. We see a wonderful opportunity to continue to grow in Cambridge and to continue to, to be able to attract employees. And make no mistake about it that what we're competing against, or what Cambridge is competing against, as mentioned before, is not, is, is not Manchester or not Leeds. It, it's actually it's San Francisco, it's Boston. From a manufacturing standpoint, it's India, it's Indonesia. It's places where, where things could very easily be if they wouldn't be in Cambridge. So I guess what my plea would be is that we think and we think big. And certainly as a, as a business within Cambridge, we'd love to be a part of that. When it comes to talking to Treasury, we have to make the case for Cambridge that investing in, in Cambridge in the right way for sustainable prosperity actually opens up a greater tax revenue for Treasury than other investments. But we must start to work with government and we must start to get people in government prepared to open their minds and think how they can use the availability of private finance to come in and make a mixture which will deal with the long-term growth issues. We have a golden opportunity to try and build a platform for the next 50 years of success of the Cambridge Cluster, but if we don't do it, we'll actually risk slaying the golden goose that has been laying the golden eggs. So let's take the chance we have now, and I hope you'll all be with us in making the case for Cambridge. All governments look for success. They look for parts of the country that can produce success for them. I don't think there's any doubt that the Cambridge region, the Cambridge sub-region, is the best place in the country to deliver economic success. What we've got to get across to them, as I say, is not special pleading, it's actually part of the national case. And I think collectively we can do that. History is great, but it doesn't give you any guarantees for the future. 
and, and I think that the university welcomes competition, but that competition is global. It's not so much with the Northern Powerhouse, the Midlands Engine or the Southwest Turbine, all of which, by the way, are analogue technologies. And <laughs> that we can compete with the international centres of excellence that Anthony talked about, and I think that's why the case for Cambridge is so important. I think the case for Cambridge is absolutely indisputable. We have a unique partnership here between academia, between entrepreneurship, and between politicians. And I think the timing of this discussion couldn't really be any better, because at the moment the government is embracing devolution, but we need a holistic vision for how regions should be developed, and that is exactly what we are trying to do for the area of Cambridge and its outer regions. When we attract inquiries through our office, um, it's not a case of do we lose them to Norwich, Milton Keynes, anywhere else it's across the planet and actually that's a challenge. We've got to battle the perception we've had more than our fair share. The balance is actually Cambridge's and the wider area's contribution to UK PLC. This area, the wider LEP area, is a net contributor. How do we strengthen that in light of global competition? We've had that first city deal at 500 million and they are asking us to come back for more. Government wants to see that we're competent Government needs to feel that we can do it better as local authorities, as a local business community, than they could through command control in the centre, and we have to prove that. We are the Cambridge powerhouse. Cambridge has achieved great things. It will continue to achieve great things, but it may not achieve all the great things it could achieve. And that is the, the key message for today. Allow Cambridge to deliver its potential for the UK. Cambridge is a growth city. It has an employment growth rate of 7.4% in its technology sectors. For this to continue, it needs to have the right level of investment to put into its infrastructure to meet the demands of that growth. And in order to do so, government needs to take us very seriously on the ask that we have put forward to them to ensure that we grow to the point that actually will help the UK as a whole. <laughs>